Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of Up Close on METV. I'm Charles Clapsaddle, Station Manager for Manatee Educational Television, and it is our great pleasure to have with us today Mark Rogers, the director of the Da Vinci Machines Exhibition. Not only is he the director, he's also the curator, and some would say, and I would say, the mastermind about bringing this exhibit to Manatee County and the city of Bradenton. Mark, thank you oh. so much for being here. We've been talking about this for a while, and it's such a great pleasure to have you here on the program and to talk about this wonderful exhibit. Charles, it's absolutely a pleasure to be here. Our time, we've, uh, we've opened up the Da Vinci Machines exhibition in Bradenton right about November the 15th. And ever since we've been down here, it has been the most unbelievable, rewarding experience in any stops that this exhibition has had in, in, in the United States. Well, Mantee County and the City of Brayden are very, very fortunate to have this, especially after this exhibit was in Denver, a yes. major metropolitan city in the city of St. Louis, and now the City of Bradenton is here uh, hosting this exhibit. We're very, very fortunate that you came here. Well, thank you. The, the Museum of Leonardo da Vinci in Florence, Italy, where this exhibit is from, they actually made three of these exhibits to travel the world. They made one for Europe, they made one for Asia, and they made one for North America, of which this is the one. Mm -hmm. This is actually the fourth stop of its U.S. journey. Yeah. It started about, four, about three and a half years ago in Los Angeles, and it journeyed to downtown St. Louis. And then while we were in, uh, Brayton, uh, in uh, Denver, uh, uh, Mayor Poston uh, gave us a call. They actually sent a representative out to see us in Denver. And about a week later, I, did, I didn't hear, hear from anybody, <laughs> and about a week later, I got a call from his office, and they said, um, and it was the mayor, mm -hmm. and he said, hey, Mark, what are you doing for the winter? And I said, what, what do you mean? I said, well, we're, you know, we're looking for another spot for the exhibit. Or whatever. He goes, I want you to come to Bradenton. So we visited Bradenton, mm -hmm. and uh, our home crew actually is from St. Louis. Ah. And this last winter, you know, it's been a horrible winter. Terrible been, winter. I, and we could not have made the, the greatest decision. So we came down, we moved here after almost being a year in Denver. We came here to Bradenton, and it's been absolutely, I mentioned, an incredible, rewarding experience. Well, I must say that Mayor Poston is one of your biggest fans. Um, he says this is a, just a tremendous opportunity for the city and a tremendous opportunity for this entire region. Um, you exceeded you know, the expectations for attendance, and I believe I read someplace that it's over 15,000 people have attended, which is tremendous. Yeah, I was a little concerned about coming to Bradenton because because Denver is such a huge metro, uh, metropolitan area, exactly. almost close to three million people, mm -hmm. and they came down here. But I think the key here, not only was the one, is that we were so located here around mm -hmm. the other communities, correct? Around uh, uh, well, Bradenton and St. Pete's and Sarasota and right. and and every, we were drawing people in Tampa even, and we're actually we were drawing people from all over the region. And, and actually, since I've been down here, and out of the four stops of this exhibit, I have really never been in a city where they are so proactive no, in true. getting the arts and the culture. And um, so it's been, a, once, once again, I've said now three times, it's been an absolutely unbelievable, overwhelming experience for us here. And you've taken the Bradenton Auditorium, which is, you know, kind of a performance space, and you've really transformed that into a museum-like atmosphere. And I think that everybody who enters there are really involved in the process of the exhibit itself. And I want to take a few minutes, if, if we can, to talk about, you know, just the quality and the caliber and the, and, and the beauty of the exhibit that you, which you've brought here. Um, it's unbelievable. Uh, Handcrafted uh, uh, reproductions yes, of they're the actually Vinci's. made. they're actually made by third generation artisons at the Museum of Leonardo da Vinci in Florence, Italy. And we actually, when you come through the exhibit, we actually have a small tape of them showing how they actually made the exhibit and put all the uh, all the um, all the all the models together. Uh, most people know Da Vinci by obviously the Mona Lisa and the and and uh, the Last Supper, but most people don't know that he was one of the most prolific inventors of all time. That's cool. He had 44,000 inventions, only which of 14,000 of his drawings sur uh, survived. And if people come, it's actually quite funny because the people come through the exhibit and they and they ask me, um, they said, well, these um, the original 
mm-hmm. of his thing. And I said, well, <laughs> all his originals were made of wood. <laughs> and I said, we're trying to get our decks to last about 10 years. <laughs> so anyway, but these are absolutely beautifully handcrafted and oh. made. And, um, and, and arranged in four different sections. Mm-hmm. It's in the way he actually uh, uh, thought of them and so on. He, it's it's uh, uh, the military, mm-hmm. flight, hydraulics, and machines. Mm-hmm. And the main thing that's the most amazing thing about it that stuns the people is not only was the amount, but the, the uh, they say there are 2,500, 2,500 of his designs, inventions, and theories that we use every day in our life. And, and that's just amazing. And I, I want to talk about your presentation of this, but, all of these things are so intricate, so complicated, and there's a there's a simplicity to their design, but the the actual composition of them are beautiful. Yeah, and and the applications of them are unbelievable. Mm-hmm. When he has, I mean, when you think, I mean, well, I mean just the, the the little things of of the worm screw mm-hmm. that and the and the ball bearing and the and the circular motion machine that is the uh, the predecessor to our locomotives and to our internal combustion engines. We actually have a 350 uh, cubic inch General Motors engine in the it's exhibit, true, you do. <laughs> and we've actually taken it apart. And every and people are amazed that everything in that engine, except for the spark plug, who mm. Tesla, we know mm-hmm. Tesla designed the spark plug. Everything that in that engine, every design and theory that moves that 350 cubic inch engine by General Motors uh, forward is from Da Vinci. is amazing. It, it it really is amazing, and and, and a true genius of, of of his time. But one of the things that I find so admirable and, and, and just creates this kind of excitement and dynamic is your enthusiasm and your excitement over this exhibit. Um, and I, we've seen you interact with people that through the museum and some of your presentations, and you actually bring such f- uh, knowledge and insight into him as an artist and him as a man. And that's a remarkable achievement because you get this kind of uh, knowledge that you don't really get from a book. Well, that is a great point. When we first got the exhibit, and my brother John and I took over the exhibition in St. Louis, the, um, the, the gentleman came from Italy, uh, Luigi and Gabriel came to help us set it up and so on. And at the very end of it, we thought it was basically an exhibition that you just walked through. Mm-hmm. And they were about to leave the next day, and Luigi says to us, um, said to my brother and John, and he said, and myself, they said, um, well, when do you want to go through the tour? <laughs> and I said, well, I said, what tour? And he said, um, no, we had to give a, a guided tour with the exhibit. And I said, oh, you do? I said, well, give it to me. <laughs> so he walked through the exhibit. And to be honest with you, it was quite lackluster, but it was so informative and so interesting. And I thought, oh, my goodness. I said, this goes here, and this goes here, and this uh-huh. fits here, and this is the piece of the puzzle that was missing here. And everything that they said, everything that he did, it was just blew me away, <laughs> and I just started, and I began to um, to uh, wind that through to a uh, through a, a tour where we not only talk about Da Vinci and how he grew up and his life and um, all that, but uh, by the end of the tour, we're end up, we're talking about Van Cliburn and we're no, talking about uh, yeah, yeah. Paul McCartney and we're talking about uh, um, uh, 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 Les Paul. Yeah. And exactly. all these different things that, that 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 bring all this together. That the impact that they had is just amazing. And it, it's a remarkable achievement. I, I really do because not only do you have these beautiful and intricate machines and his creations, but through your knowledge and background and 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 the excitement that you bring to this, people are walking away with more insight more knowledge, more excitement about these great masters. And, and that's a remarkable achievement, and you should be congratulated well, on that. Well, thank you so much. You know, the funny part about it is the more that I found out about it, the more I wanted to find out about it. And then the more I wanted to find out about it, I wanted to tell everybody about it. <laughs> and so it just kind of, it, it just, that's what I wanted to know. And, and the people have come in, and what they, they, they say, and I'm just saying, well, I don't want to be self accolading by any means, but the one lady came in, the, the one exhibit, and said, you know, you know, um, God brought me into this exhibit today. <laughs> and I thought, well, that was so, so, you know, so nice of you to hear it and say, and I'm flattered to, to hear that, but it, it, it's really, um, the one lady came in uh, with her whole family and they said that they'd been, they'd spent the last three weeks in Europe, uh, in Italy, mm-hmm. traveling Europe, and they, and they said they found out more about the Italian <laughs> Renaissance and, and Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo than they found in our exhibit than they, than, than they did three weeks traveling Europe. And, and I can see that as perfect because the insight and the knowledge and, and the details that you can provide are, are just amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And one of the great things that you, that 
you do through this exhibit is you host a lot of young people, schools visit, classes visit, and the excitement that you know you kind of relay to the young people is is just great. I mean, I think that's a very very exciting thing because in this day of you know uh, digital uh, domain, you know you really can excite young people. But once they see this and they hear the excitement of it, they're kind of enthused. You know, we want, and I, I tell them, in, uh, our, our other manager, our managing uh, uh, manager, uh, Jesse, that works with us so right. closely at the, at the exhibit, he says people have no idea what's going to happen when they come through the exhibit. Exactly. And that they're going to be changed. And we want you to be changed. There is absolutely no way that you can walk through that place Without. and not come out and be changed. And, and that's an excellent point because a lot of people, they'll go to an exhibit or an art exhibit and, and they'll see it and they'll, and they'll take a great deal of pleasure in that. But I think with this exhibit, because it is multimedia, you have films that are being shown, people can actually work a machine or two, they can see different images and stuff. So they walk away with this kind of concentration of, uh, of, of knowledge. This one lady walked in at the, at the end of the, the one tour, she walked up and she was leaving the exhibit and she said, you know what I've decided I have to do in my life? And I said, what? She goes, I have to ramp it up. <laughs> she goes, when I leave here, I am going to ramp up my life. Mm. And, uh, and, that's, and, that's, and that's the fun part. Our, our theme to our exhibit when, you, when we get there, and it's, and it's all over the place, is to discover the Da Vinci in you. Right. That is our theme. Yeah. And that uh, when you look at what one man did, and, and I, we even say that during the, uh, uh, the tour, in, not that long ago, actually in 1899, Charles Durrell, who was the head of the U.S. Patent Office. Exactly. Which is a, a, a very interesting story. He was being head of the U.S. Patent Office in 1899. He sent a letter over to Congress. And in his letter to Congress in 1899, he said to Congress that you can go ahead and close the U.S. Patent Office. Everything's been done. Everything's been done. <laughs> Everything's been vented and things like that. And, um, and, and that's what I tell him. He said, I mean, how dead wrong was that guy? And I said, there's so much. You look at everything that's happened between 1899. And, and I tell them one point, if, if we did one, if, if there's one person out there that did one thing mm -hmm. in their life that they, uh, that they concentrated on, and, and also our other main theme through the exhibit is, is that uh, it's this personal time that you need for development. Right. That is the, the, the key to this. Well, I, you know, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know, one of the things that, that, that you've done in your efforts to not only uh, express you know, the great things that Da Vinci and Michelangelo have done, is that you've actually done a, a whole series of presentations. Now, recently, you did two back-to-back -back shows at the Manatee Performing Arts Center, where you not only showed all the many great things that are happening as part of the exhibit, but you provided this insight and this knowledge and this passion about these two great artists. And I, I want to take a moment now uh, just to mention that you have another wonderful show coming up on April 19th at the Van Wezel Performing Arts Center. Please tell us about that, because that's a major achievement. And I think, again, you're to be congratulated for, for you know, reaching out to the Van Wezel to provide this. Well, you know, we've taken all these images, and, all, and, and I say that they're, they're, we, have, we have movies, we have um, animations, we have uh, uh, obviously of, of, uh, reproductions of his drawings, right. and his sculptures or whatever. But the main thing is what we try to do through the, through the whole presentation is, um, we call it side by side. Mm -hmm. And you know, the one that when we were first putting it together, the everyone said that we should call it um, the Battle of the Titans. Because <laughs> everybody loves a war. Yeah. Everybody loves conflict. They love this against each other. And the more that you find out about Da Vinci and Michelangelo, they weren't fighting with themselves, right. they were fighting the powers that be. Mm -hmm. they, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were actually, that, that, that they were using their creativity and their and the things that they had to focus, they actually had to think outside the box exactly. and think around the powers that be to get their message out the same way we do today. Well, one of the things that I think a lot of people don't realize, and you do this in a very eloquent and a very articulate manner, is that they were contemporaries, Michelangelo and da Vinci. They were contemporaries. You know, they didn't, uh, you know, they weren't the best of friends, but, you know, they, they, they knew each other. They worked in the same period of time. Yeah, they actually, um, they, uh, Michelangelo was 22 years younger than Leonardo da Vinci. When she said they were, they were constant competitors, they actually, not only did they not, did they not like each other, they actually hated each other during the <laughs> Renaissance. They couldn't be stand to be in the same room with each other. And in fact, Michelangelo during his entire life referred to Leonardo da Vinci, not as da Vinci or not as Leonardo, but he called him and referred to him as the old man. <laughs> and he actually said that he thought that da Vinci was out of touch with what was going on in Rome and Milan and Florence of the day. 
But you know, well, they're 22 years young, you know how, you know how kids they're, are. They're, they're, they're how kids are. <laughs> but you know, the remarkable thing that you bring to this presentation, Mark, and, and it's, it really is, is that you give insight into the man itself. You know, you talk about their background, their upbringing, you know, the work that they did, you know, how they took steps, to the, what they created, how they created it. It's, it's a very intricate portrait of both of these individuals, and again, side by side. It's, it's a remarkable achievement. Because we don't want them to see this as this huge monolith in the sky. Because right. they're not this monolith. They were human beings. They got up every day. They had their own trials and tribulations. They had their own critics. Mm -hmm. I mean, Michelangelo had his own. They, when you talk about that, one of his biggest pieces of artwork was the one of the, 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 one of the huge critics that he actually uh, went back to correct, that he actually corrected them, that he actually tricked them. <laughs> That's um, right. You know how he, on, on he had corrected one of his most major pieces of artwork, but he really didn't. He just tricked the people into seeing it uh, that, 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 uh, that he did that he said even, he wrote many, many years later in his writings, uh, Michelangelo at the very end of his life, he was a pro prolific writer and he wrote sonnets and he wrote songs and he was just at the end of his life and, and, and he wrote back and he, and he said that um, when he was painting the Sistine Chapel that he said all the internal struggles that he had within himself, mm -hmm. all the inter struggles that he had with Pope uh, Julius II mm -hmm. and his critics actually said to him, they said he, he only uh, painted uh, frescoes when he had to, when <laughs> the popes asked him to and, he said, and, and his actually, critics said, well, he couldn't do a very good job. That's right. Yeah. He couldn't do a very good job. How good a job could he do? And he wasn't into this actual <laughs> portrait painting that Da Vinci was in, which was a huge, another whole level of painting right, in itself. Right. And then, I mean, we saw what came out of him. He merged victorious. And, and you know, the story that you bring, the story, that you, you create the, the, a, a very human face for both of these, you know, great artists. And, uh, and by understanding that, you can see the power and the dynamic of all of their work. And it's a remarkable achievement. But I want to talk a little bit about you know the your your event that's coming up at the Van Wezel because this is a very very important event and I would encourage anybody in the community in both Sarasota and Manatee County to to see this because Mark's presentation at the Manatee Performing Arts was sold out both shows it's a, an event that one can really get involved with and Mark you know works with the audience and it's a very exciting presentation it's not an art lecture it's not like here's the painting here let me tell you about it this is a multimedia show that's very very exciting yeah, and with the um, it's it's actually in two acts, so we have you get a little break in there because it's so much to take in at one time. Absolutely, and so much to take in at one time, and we actually start from the, from the beginning of their lives. Mm -hmm. We tell how they were born and what they were in and, and and how they were raised, and then we even talk about the very end of their life. We talk about what happened on, at being 88 years old. That Michelangelo mm -hmm. lived to be 88 years old, and, and and Da Vinci actually lived. The average life expectancy at the time was uh, was 42 to 45 in the long end, and Michelangelo <laughs> and Da Vinci actually figured out how to, how, how to outlive everybody in their lifetime. I mean, and I even say that during the, th that you don't think the two greatest geniuses <laughs> knew, did, how to do yeah, knew how to live a, a long, healthy, incredible mm. life. Of course they figured out how to have a long, healthy, incredible life. So we, 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 we talk about everything, but plus the, the, the relationship of, the, uh, of them to each other, of them mm -hmm. to the outside, which is really the key part. It, and, it, and it is, and I think some of the insight that you bring to that, you know, the, melding that with history and contemporary history and you know, how they achieve things, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great achievement. One of the things from seeing your presentation that I took away is that you have this uh, passion, drive, energy that really comes across that makes it so enjoyable for for an audience uh, to get involved with because you do that in such a way in such an energetic and passionate way that it, it it's a pleasure to watch it well thank you so much you know think about it and i tell the people at the exhibit when they leave and after the uh, presentation of the manatee performing arts center they said oh you're so passionate and you get into it how can you not <laughs> i mean we're talking about the two of the greatest geniuses that in the history of the world that ever lived and we're talking about all, how everyone, they, everything that they, they did, everything that they said, mm -hmm. relates to us today. I tell that to the young children about um, uh, uh, Michelangelo, for instance, that, um, well, the kind of, the, uh, just a, a, a 30 second part of that, the, uh, da Vinci was tall and handsome and gregarious, mm -hmm. and Michelangelo was kind of small and diminutive. Um, da Vinci believed that you should look impeccable and you dress and you should be 100% best every day of your life. Michelangelo was the total opposite. He actually slept in his clothes. <laughs> and the reason they didn't find out later that he slept in his clothes was that when he woke up in the morning that he was so full of his passion to create that he didn't even take time to change his clothes. He wanted to wake up and immediately go to his artwork. 
immediately go to passion. And I tell that to the people at, at, at the exhibit. You know, in, in life, even today, you know, we're always on our phones and stuff. We're always constantly receiving and exactly. sending and receiving. And we, that we, we the, oh, and I, and I tell them to, to find out what your passion is in your life. That mm -hmm. what is that drives you the night before you go to bed. Right. That you want to be dressed. Ready to get up and go to right here the first time, and that's what I'm trying to. That's what that's really and, what I'm trying and, to get. And you across. do it, and you do it in such a manner and fashion that you enthrall people with it. So let's take a brief look at at a moment of Mark's presentation and what one can expect from his presentation at the Van Wessel. He designed it as an interlocking gear system, and as the wheels would come around, it turned the gear cage on top, and the blades would come around and literally mow down the opposition. <coughs> Wow, huh? What did you think? If you, what did you think if you were on the battlefield and you saw about 25 of these things coming at you, what would you think? I know what you'd think. You'd think kill the rider and get out of the way. But Da Vinci was truly a man of peace. I have many examples to show you truly what a man of peace Da Vinci was. They said there was another reason he left one or two key factors out of his military machine drawings. You know why? Because he didn't want them to work. They said when Da Vinci would go through villages and towns around Florence and Milan and Rome, as he'd go through the center squares of town, he'd buy birds in cages as he'd go through the center marketplaces. And then when he got to the edge of town, you know what he'd do? He'd open them up and set them free. Does that sound like a man of war to you? Not to me. It sounds like a man of peace to me. And I have many examples to show you truly what a man of peace Da Vinci was. Well, as you can see, Mark's energy and excitement really is just palpable. And it's just something that even everyone must see, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're a, a, a fan of Da Vinci or not. It is such a remarkable presentation that I think everyone should enjoy it. And Mark, you know, I know you obviously given this presentation before, but each time that you see it, there's this kind of like uh, originality and excitement that comes through. Well, you know, um, people said, they ask, you know what the crazy question people ask me all the time? They say, who do you like better? <laughs> you like Da Vinci, you like Michelangelo. Michelangelo like Da Vinci, you like Da Vinci. And you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's so crazy, but I think part of it is, I think part of it that keeps the originality of it so, so fresh, is that, it, uh, that Da Vinci, it, you know, was in everything. Yeah. I mean, he was not an, I mean, they even found now that he, that he designed clothing. <laughs> he sang beautifully. He, they, even found, they even found a handbag that he designed now. So, I mean, so he was into art and music. He designed, in fact, they say in the, in the picture of the musician, the famous, with the red hat on, mm -hmm. they say that's actually him. Really? Yeah, that's, actually, that's actually him as a young Leonardo da Vinci. And because he designed musical instruments and he designed with all of his inventions. But his, but his whole thing and the whole thing about it was uh, with, with da Vinci, is his entire life and everything that he wanted to do was to make our life better. Yeah. That's what it was. And, and I think that's really evident in the, you know, 60 or so uh, machines that you have as part of your exhibit that, you know, the agriculture, the, you know, the boats, the worm screw, the pulleys, all of these things were part of his concept of, you know, to benefit humanity. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, and uh, in fact, what even kind of funny part, I mean, not, uh, I wasn't quite right for about three days after I first read this about, about Da Vinci that when he died, that in his first day he was so connected to the common man, he was so connected to the individual that on the way to his final resting place, he wanted his coffin to be followed not by kings or princes or aristocracy, that he wanted his final, the way to the final resting place, they wanted his coffin he went to be followed by 60 beggars. Mm -hmm. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> that I mean, really I mean it's good. just really, when you think about that, that our, our whole life, that people think, well, we want to get recognized by somebody big or mm -hmm. somebody this or thing this or some politician. He didn't want any of those people. He wanted, the, he wanted the, oh, his own peers the common man. To compliment him. How incredible is that? But that is the kind of level of detail and insight that you provide throughout your conversations. And those are the kind of things that people take in so they understand the complexity of the individual and also how that individual created his art. And that level of detail, that excitement that you bring is really, I mean, it's something that, you know, we that's not been in this area before. And I would encourage everyone who is available to go to the Van Wezel on April 19th and see this wonderful exhibit. Now we're kind of winding down a little bit, Mark, and I want to take a little time to talk about uh, the impact of, of the exhibit that it's made here in Manatee County. As I said, you know, exceeded you know expectation over 15,000. 
you know, what do you want people to take away, not only from the exhibit, but also from your presentations? What is that uh, uh, tangible thing that you want people to walk out with? What I want them to walk out with, not only is the respect for these two people, even, even more than you could possibly have, even the, the, more, the more you have, but I also want to see it as a, um, as a reflection in their own life. Mm -hmm. And they walk in, and, and like, like I said before about, about this personal time that they had, that they need, at the one exhibit that we had in, um, uh, we had the Da Vinci Michelangelo side by side in Denver, they actually had this booth, that they, a, a complete recreation of Michelangelo's desk. Yeah. And he called his personal desk, his personal area, he called it his con contemplative room. Ah. Where he would go in and dream and think, and and and, and we all need that. Mm -hmm. That we all need to, to break that apart. We in, in, uh, aside in our house, you know, in in our, in, in a, a way that that we can actually have this time that we can actually dream and think and imagine and create and wonder. And that is the main the main thing that if we can relate this to our lives and, and push us forward, that's, that is the main thought. And, and, and I think that, that is what you're doing each and every day when that exhibit is open. Uh, as people come through it, they, uh, and as you've uh, so aptly said, they begin to discover the Da Vinci in that. Uh, well, I cannot thank Andy, METV, Charles, I cannot thank you for everything that, that they've done for us. Everybody has been so supportive here. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the mayor and for the Bradenton uh, Visitors Area and, and mm -hmm. Convention mm -hmm. Visitors Bureau has right. been unbelievable. The, uh, even the, uh, the, the local merchants and, and the people who are coming mm -hmm. through, and it's just, been, it's just been one of the most positive stops. I didn't think it could get any better than Denver before I came <laughs> out here. That was kind of the, like, like, no, the, like that was the bar, we thought. Well, that's, we thought, that's And, and we, have, we have blown the doors off of Denver. Well, and I think that's a remarkable thing because of the, not only the uniqueness, but also the, you know, the drive and energy that you bring, it's, it's remarkable. And so, again, congratulations on extending that. And I think the city and everybody realize, you know, the importance of, you know, continuing to have an exhibit of the caliber and quality that you've brought here. Um, Tell us briefly, if people want to come to the exhibit, it's at the Bradenton Auditorium, Bradenton. which is right on Baccarat Boulevard, but your hours are what? Yeah, we're 10 to 6 every day. We're open every day, now through the, um, through the time that we leave, because we want everybody to get a chance to come in to see it. Even the, weekends included? Even weekends included. On Sunday, they let us, we're only open 12 to 6 on Sunday. They, okay. they let us sleep in two extra hours on Sunday. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, very that's nice. good. And, we give, and the, our website is discoverdavinci.com. Mm -hmm. We have any new updates we put on there or whatever. We're going to have, uh, we, we have it like our local artists have come by, and they mm -hmm. do live artwork at, at the have. display. And uh, we, we're looking forward to that, and we have you know to continue that theme. Um, I even think the uh, uh, the uh, Bradenton Film uh, uh, Festival mm -hmm. is going to have their closing night there at the at the exhibition. And I think I've heard about that. And, you know, it's an uh, inaugural event that they're trying to kick off here, and they want to use the Da Vinci uh, exhibit as part of the backdrop for their special event. And we cannot be any more honored to be part mm -hmm. of that. And, and and again, I think Manatee and, and the city of Bradenton should be very honored that you selected this area. To, you know, to bring this exhibit. I think anywhere that you go, it would be a success, whether it's in the bright lights of Denver or St. Louis or you know, here in Manatee County. You know, any city, this exhibit would certainly be most appreciative. And your energy and drive, uh, it brings a lot to it. And, and is like the driving force behind this exhibit. And I think your enthusiasm, it's really contagious. You know, I've seen you speak to, uh, to groups of people and when they leave, they get so excited they have that, uh, and I think you, your uh, your catchphrase, "How cool is that?" <laughs> I, th I think you should get that patented because I think I've heard people starting to say it now. So well, that's, uh, that was, that's that's very nice. And then, but the thing I want to point out is, I get as much from the people that come to the exhibit. Mm -hmm. The people that they come there and they look up and they and they when they talk to me and they say to me the different things, and and, and they and they also and I learn as much. I'm still on the 100 <laughs> till full total of learning. And people are, hey, did you know this about him? Did you know I this about him? So I learn as much from the people as they hopefully they get some uh, they get some benefit from myself. Well, if, if the sold out performances of the Manti Performing Arts uh, Center are, are any indicator that your thing at the Van Wezel on tell us the date and time again. April nineteenth. Uh, it's East, actually Easter Saturday. How perfect has come by and he spent Easter Saturday with us. Wonderful. Uh, going through the winter Renaissance with and, us. And people can find out about tickets by going to the Van, Van Wazel, Wazel site yep. and finding out? Absolutely there. And also we can go to our website at, at Discover Da Vinci. We also have a, we have made one just for this one called Discover Michelangelo. So just type in Discover Da Vinci, type in Discover Michelangelo, and we come right up. 
Perfect. And then, um, we would love to, we would absolutely love to see everyone there at the Van Wezel. Mark, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. And I know you have a very busy schedule. You're, you know, if anybody can be described as a renaissance man, <laughs> I think, I think you truly can. And, you know, your, uh, your vision, uh, you know, to develop this and to bring it, and not only that, but the excitement uh, that you've put into this uh, multimedia event is tremendous. And especially I want to thank you for bringing the original. <laughs> this, this My is, pleasure. Is, this, it's this awesome. Isn't the original <laughs> love, Mona Lisa, is it? Well, the, actually, it's a little bit. It's pretty close. They, it's actually a licensed digital image from uh, the Museum of Leonardo da Vinci. And it's, we, 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 we had it uh, printed and stretched and framed to the exact size of the Mona Lisa. So well, this, you couldn't get any closer than the, the original that we've got right here. And that's the level of detail that you bring to, to, you know, to this entire body of work, is you know, the detail and the precision and the finesse that you bring to it. And Mark, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to do this, but also for bringing this wonderful exhibit here to the city of Bradenton in Manatee County. It's truly one of a kind. People walk away with it with excitement and knowledge and insight that they didn't really have before. It's a unique and wonderful exhibit. I'll tell you one other thing. One of our first meetings down here, we met with the city fathers and Elliot from the city of- uh, Elliot Falcone, uh, yeah, yes. Elliot was, was in, and he said, Mark, how do you like it down here? I said, you know, Elliot, I really like it down here. <laughs> he said, let me tell you something. He said, Mark, you know you're never gonna leave, right? <laughs> and I said, and I didn't quite know what that meant at the time, but I know what he meant now. I yeah. love Bradenton. Yeah. I love Sarasota. I love the Gulf Coast. I don't think we're ever gonna leave. Well, if, if, if I was to take a guess, I think uh, you're, you're probably thinking of other projects and other exhibits and other areas because you really truly are a Renaissance person. And again, thank you so much for sharing this. One last time on the Van Wezel exhibit, yeah. uh, the Van Wezel performance, yeah. April 19th, 19th. Van Wezel Performing Arts Center. Yes, go to vanwezel.org. We would love to see you there. I promise you that we put this, this together that it had to be there was only one thing my criteria was when I put this uh, presentation, this multimedia presentation together, it had to be worthy of Da Vinci and Michelangelo. And, and it truly is. And because I, I want to make it worthy, and I promise you it'll be worthy of Da, it, da Vinci and And it truly is. I mean, you know, the images, the multimedia, the, the, the clips, everything, it's just a remarkable program. And, you know, if you have, and I think if Michelangelo and Da Vinci were here, they'd be very, very proud of what you've done on their behalf and, and the continued knowledge and, and that you continue to, to put forth about these two great artists. Charles, thank you so much. I'm totally, ever since I've been here, even today, I'm totally overwhelmed. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for joining us on this very special edition of Up Close on METV. Please find out more about Da Vinci and Michelangelo side by side. It's an experience you won't want to miss.